two men journey to the bars and restaurants of Scandinavia to find amazing beers, always with the same question. Hey, what's on tap? It's time to find out. Welcome to What's on Tap Podcast. I am your host, Stefan. I'm your host, Martin. How have you been, Martin? Uh, pretty good. Excellent. Uh, I say that every episode, yes. I think. So I know you're keeping the streak alive. I hurt my back Aww. and it hurts and I need beer to console myself. It does always make things better, I'll, I'll give you that. So I'm, I'm right least, there with you. But at least it's not one of these uh, back hurts where you've been sitting bad or doing something. I just, it just hit it. I, uh, an object hit my back, <laughs> that's why it hurts. Yikes, that's not good. <laughs> it, was, it was a door. But that it, happens. It'll be, it'll, be, it'll be fine. Yeah, you'll, you're, here, you're young still. Yeah. <laughs> thank you thank you kind gentlemen you're very welcome you are a southern gentleman I, I try I do try um, well today we've got um, two beers from Demort Slutel and actually I think the next three episodes will all feature beers from Demort Slutel yeah this is um, the start of a mini series yes this is actually I think our first mini series that we've done um, so we have the fifth anniversary beers from the brewery and we are very excited to to feature them in the uh, progression that they have have outlined. So we start with Paper, which is the starter. It's a New England double IPA coming in at 8.5% because that's the way you always want to start. And it says uh, Paper, uh, Year 5 starter. Uh, great food, family games, and beer are our favorite combination. That's why we're inviting you to our dinner party. Uh, each ap- each oh, after our aperitif, we serve a oh. So we should have the aperitif first. Oh, oh no. no, we have got these wrong. I had the aperitif after dinner. Because oh. isn't that usually when you have an aperitif? Is after? No, you have did di- di- digestive, digestive, digestive. Oh, I, sh- I should have double checked. You this. should have double checked this. Well, you know what we can do? We can change this. We can switch it up. We can do the uh, the NEPA, uh, sorry, the paper and the rock first. It's, it's it's just as easy as opening another can, and so then we si- just have to take the so no the scissors, scissors out of the way. No, we're not going to be scissoring yet. Oh man! <laughs> so let's open this up then, because uh, I did wrong. So we're doing starter first. We're going to do the starter. No, we're going to do the aperitif, aperitif first. first. So we'll still do it in order. We just got to re. Recalibrate what we're doing here. So let's the, just yeah, the aperitif is like the welcome drink, right? So Hello, the, we haven't even sit, sat down at the dinner table yet. True, true, true. So I got that all out of order. Um, so let's let's back this up and start over. So just ignore the first two, uh, three minutes of this episode. No, they okay. can't. They can't. They can't ignore it. It's in the past. So blah 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 blah. Inviting you to a dinner party. Uh, first served is a balanced and light aperitif to stimulate the appetite. Uh, made with lovely smelling Egyptian hibiscus flowers, nutrient Himalayan salt, and tropic pink guava. So this is rock. It's an aperitif sour coming in at 5.5%. Um, yeah, and okay, that's all I can tell you. It's and just a, a sour of some sort. And for anyone who hasn't understood it yet, uh, the theme is basically rock, paper, scissors, and then they they go the extra route of this lizard, uh, yeah, lizard Spock. Lizard Spock. That came out of the... Um, it has to be popularized by uh, Big, uh, Big Bang Theory. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's a Big Bang Theory reference. I don't know that it ever existed before then. So, Paper Rock Scissors. Is that what's in called Rochambeau? It is Rochambeau. Oh. Yeah. I, I went out on a ledge. I did not research. But, I, you know, I like to, to throw mm-hmm. out uh, weird, obscure American references. I don't know that's an American ref- reference. It's not? I'm pretty sure Rochambeau is not it does American sound, it, in it origin. It sounds very French. It does sound very French, doesn't it? <laughs> like Lafayette, a great hero of the American Revolution. So And the French Revolution. And the French Revolution, and I believe the Haitian Revolution, Ooh. too. Um, it's funny you should mention that, because there's a, there's a, a, we're going to also digress another time. Um, there's a podcast called Revolutions Podcast. And um, the, the author of the podcast has been going through and all of these different revolutions uh, and how they all kind of interlinked together. Um, and he wrote a book about Lafayette and his uh, influences through, through all of this. Nice. So I'm uh, looking forward to uh, getting a copy of it and reading it because it was really interesting to see how he was so instrumental in all of these different major events that, that took place around the same time. Um, 
Right now he's on a 50-part episode uh, on the Russian Revolution. Oof. And we haven't even gotten to the Re- Russian Revolution yet. Oof. Yeah, what I didn't realize is how, how dead Marx was before like anything actually started to happen yeah, yeah. with his philosophies. I thought they were all like contemporaries of each other. But no, no, there's a good gap in between Marxist philosophy and whenever the people's movement started in, um, in, the, uh, in uh, Russia. Yeah, it's, been, then, it's been a fascinating uh, podcast. And then you have the battle between Stalin and Trotsky. Yeah, I yeah. mean that that one has to be at least two of his fifty parts episodes. Uh, yeah, yeah, and they were both <laughs> exiled at one point, and you yeah. know came back in. It's it's been it's like a crazy thing. You're like, wow. <laughs> All right, so let's jump back into this yeah, because uh, we haven't yet gotten to a beer. Yes. So we have rock, the Murslutel rock yes. aperitif sour. And this has to be a goza because it smells kind of salty and it does a little briny on the nose which uh, I'm very bra- excited about my brain switched off when you read the ingredients then it didn't really have any but it's Himalayan pink salt yeah. so it is a gosa hibiscus pink pepper and pink guava yeah well let's do it to it let's so, see what happens so that's a gua- cheers uh, it's pink they, they definitely got pink in there so on the bingo sheet it's a guava thick your guava uh, mm-hmm. square um this is pretty good I would say it's it's a little thicker than I was expecting it to be. I thought it was going to be a lot lighter because a lot of ghosts are very much light on the yeah on the um, the mouth feel, but this one's got a pretty rich mouth feel to it. So if they use some kind of fruit puree or something, then mm-hmm. probably they added a lot of that. It might not be uncommon when you're dealing with hibiscus. Isn't that something you would need to add quite a lot of? Um, yeah, but I would guess that you're talking of because hibiscus is a flower. Yeah, but you so would it's, still. It's more of a light coloring adjunct, more than a huge flavor profile. Uh, it's kind of like dragon fruit. Dragon fruit looks great, but it doesn't really yeah. add much flavor. But hibiscus does have quite a bit of flavor on its own. I'm not getting a ton of hibiscus off of this. No. Um, I wish the pink pepper was a little more prevalent. Um, there is a, a guava esque. Um, so do you think pink pepper it? is the same thing as rosé pepper? Uh, I, I think so. Because rosé pepper has quite a, a yeah. strong, powerful flavor. Yeah, in, in the U.S. it's called pink peppercorn. Okay. It's not called uh, rosé peppercorn, okay. so it would be uh, the same. <laughs> yeah, and it's actually a berry and not a pepper. <gasps> you, you didn't know that it's not a peppercorn? Actually, pink I, thought, peppercorn I thought it was a... just the, the peppercorn in a different stage of No, no, it's actually a berry maturation. that's dried, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, mind blown. Um, this beer, while tasty, doesn't really stay with me that long. We've already started talking about pink peppercorns <laughs> and their... Uh, next next we'll switch over to Himalayan salt the, and... Uh, <laughs> Himalayan sea salt. How? Okay. Did it say? No, it, 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 Himalayan sea salt is a joke. I know. I know. It's just Himalayan pink salt. Yeah. So you couldn't have Himalayan sea salt. I'd be like, that. it doesn't work. <laughs> there, there, there are... Himalayan sea salt is sold in on this earth, and it is. How does that work? It's not. It's not sea salt. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't really make sense to me. That's why I was no. like, um, I almost said sea salt, but that was saying if it's Himalayan, it cannot be sea salt because the two things would not exist in the same region. As far as I know, Switzerland does have a navy, and they are landlocked. That does not surprise me. But I think they have some, like Lake Geneva. Yeah. There you that's go. That's it. That's it. <laughs> you are now the admiral of Lake Geneva. Some, so, someone will get super offended at that joke. Probably. And write in like, Swiss has a very proud military uh, tradition. I uh, know. They Swiss is one of the most heavily armed. Switzerland's one of the most heavily armed countries in the world. That's because everyone owns guns in their own homes. Right. Because the the state issues guns to everyone in case of some sort of yeah. military occupation, but they don't give them bullets. So. So in the case of war, they will distribute bullets. They will distribute bullets, exactly. Nice. <laughs> uh, fun Swiss facts. <laughs> okay, so what do you give our amuse bouche, or sorry, the aperitif, the rock sour? A three point five. Yeah, three point five. That's that sounds about right. It's okay. Um, I, I think that sours is not uh, Dermot Sutil's strong point. No. Uh, to the point where I kind of wish I'd quit doing them because they're always kind of thoroughly average um, and not great. And this one continues to keep that trend alive. Yeah. So moving on to paper, um, as we said, we've um, now we're 
on the starter are properly. A medium heavy starter with full hoppy flavor and fruity aroma, uh, brewed with four beautiful complementary hops: Azeka, Galaxy Citra, and Idaho Seven. Um, so we have paper, which is again eight point five percent, a New England double IPA. It smells peppery. Yeah, you're getting some like actual pepper. Getting some citrus notes off yeah. of this and a little bit of grassiness probably coming from the Idaho 7 <coughs> let's yeah. try it all right cheers, cheers. Mm, that's quite nice um, I think the hops are a little muddled because of the there's so many different types right there yeah but uh, overall I, I quite like this one it's very grassy is it a little bit Piney resin, yeah, resinous. Would you say that? No, uh, no, no, not if you would say it about the beer. Is that a word? <laughs> what was the word you used again? R resinous. 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 Right. Resinous. <laughs> You're adding an extra uh, syllable on there. Yes. No. Because I'm from uh, southern Sweden, uh, Skåne. We add syllables to. We add vowels to everything. Oh yeah. So, <laughs> you have to add at least a couple of extra vowels. Yeah. So hello becomes. Hello. <laughs> really got to stress that O's. <laughs> Whoa, yeah. Um, what do you think? The first, the very, very first flavor is, is very pleasant, but it kind of goes into you said muddled, yeah, mm -hmm. muddled, murky. Ooh, where where is it going? Yeah. I mean, there's no definitive final mm -hmm. flavor other than just kind of a sweetness to it. It's a bit of. It's better than the aperitif. Oh, definitely better than the aperitif. Like in a grand scheme of things, it's not bad. the the hop mm. The hop flavor does linger enough for it to be uh, fun. Mm -hmm. um, now I, I'm going to shock our listeners because I've I've upgraded my untapped ratings. Mm -hmm. I became a supporter, so now. I, I no longer I can no longer give three point seventy five. That's not an option for me anymore. Oh, so you can only give factors of ten. Yes. Ah. Okay. So when you bump up to get being able to give three point six seven eight nine, you lose the ability to give three seventy five. That's weird. Three seventy five is such a good uh, rating. Mm -hmm. So this is now a three point eight. Okay. Five. Uh, well, we Ooh. still stick to a point two five rating system on the. On okay. the podcast. So. Okay, fair enough. 3.75. Uh, 3.75. That's actually where I'm at as well. Yeah. I think this is, if I had a whole can of this to myself, I'd just sit and happily drink it and not be disappointed at all. Um, it's a, a nice, all-around quality um, quality New England IPA. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, well, let's just wrap this up and um, start the next episode. And see, <laughs> see you next time when we continue this uh, more the little... Uh, Drinking party. Dinner. Dinner, yes. And until... Uh, wait, so right. you, you can find us on uh, whatsontappodcast.com, Spotify, Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube, uh, definitely not Twitter. No, no, no. Screw Twitter. Nobody likes Twitter anyway. No, exactly. Um, yeah. And wherever so, you can find good quality podcasts. Exactly. And until next time... Keep drinking your dumb dumbs. Yeah.